All right, hey, so this is, <clears throat> so welcome back. Um, I'm Verz, this is, I'm speaking with uh, Logo Daedalus, uh, and uh, he is the author of Selfie Suicide, and um, yeah, um, I don't know, I'm blanking right now, but anyway, hey, what's up? What's up, man? How's it going? It's going all right. I'm still, just, I just woke up, so I'm a little bit out of it. That's fair. I mean, you're on the East Coast. You shouldn't be getting up this late, man. What's wrong with you? Uh, I'm I'm a degenerate, generally. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So uh, I recently finished your book. Um, I got to it late, so I'm uh, late to this whole like frog Twitter side of the internet. But that's very, very good. I was very, I was very impressed. Thanks, man. You actually finished it. Most people uh, read the first chapter and then uh, got mad at me. I thought it was a big troll. Bit thought it was a big troll. Which, to be fair, the first chapter is a bit of a troll. But you know, why, why did you gotta the cultivate troll? the audience? Well, it's like uh, stylistically, I think you'd agree. The first part is like very uh, purple or like very uh, slow, and there's a lot. Of, it's like um, kind of deliberately off-putting to a certain degree, um, compared to like the, the. I think it gets more readable in the style, or it's like more brisk as it goes on. Yeah, I, I did actually notice that. It uh, there's like more humor, and there's a little. It's a little less on the. It's kind of dense at first with the like the prose, and I can, yeah. And there's a little bit. It's a lot more like uh, exposition and stuff. So I get that. Yeah, I was kind of basing it off. Uh, there's a lot of books that I like where like the first part you kind of read, um, and it's like kind of. Uh, pointless or like you don't really know what the fuck's going on and it seems like a lot of the things are really arbitrary but then if you were to like reread it when you get there like all of the things that seemed like incomprehensible or like like you don't really understand the choices seem to make more sense in the context of the whole thing so yeah. like the beginning is more like for rereaders to enjoy i would say i get that that makes sense uh so the kind of the fun part well what i got from it at least um it felt like a well, it obviously is, but it felt like a critique of like modernity. Um, but like a lot of like, uh, but like a lot of what I got was that it was a lot of modernity and a lot of what we do to like compensate is performance and not really uh, has doesn't really have much in, intrinsic value. Um, yeah, the key word I would use is uh, if you've ever heard of the term phatic communication. Emphatic. No, phatic, just phatic. No, nope, I have not. So phatic communication is when people say things that, and the content of the speech is more the, uh, just the existence of the speech as opposed to the content that is in the literal words, for instance, like we, we already started this conversation with phatic communication where you just go like, Hey, how's it going, man? Is like pretty good, man. How about like, it's literal, just nonsense. Like not, and that's most of the dialogue that exists in the book is like this sort of phatic communication and like the real, um, stuff that's going on is all like submerged psychological stuff. Whereas, like, if you were to just take out the explicit dialogue from the book and read it, it would be, like, insufferably boring. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the – and I mean, like, I think that's not only found in the dialogue, but I also found that in a lot of the – I don't know, some of, like, the uh, – like, for example, like, when you – the university professors and, like, what their interests are and their specialties or the, the, exhibi the ex exhibitions – wow, exhibits – uh, all I, I feel like every it was like a, every time we went to a different topic or different um, I don't know a different area of the of the world that you built it was a lot of different versions of the same thing of just f this phatic communication. Yeah, that's like that's like the real theme I was going for is like um, just like the uh, play of uh, surfaces and uh, trying to find like the things underneath it. Mm. Nice. Oh, I'm glad I got, got the point. It kind of gave me a lot of a uh, reminder, I mean, fairly clearly of like uh, David Foster Wallace, uh, David Foster Wallace, like an infinite jest, um, but like less, but like though I felt he had a little more positive view of things, uh, but if you missed like DFW or like, and then like Kaczynski and his whole like, oh, we're all going to be just doing hobbies in, in like in the, after AI kind of takes over. Yeah, I was trying to like, it was sort of like the uh, like the museum itself already exists. I think is like this vision of um like a utopia or like uto um mu the museum in a Western society anyway. Like this uh total archive of things is like what we use to represent our notion of what a utopia would be. And uh, mm -hmm. because like you know it's like where all things are preserved. It's kind of like a uh, like secular heaven almost was like kind of what I was going for. Or at least that's how um 
I think it kind of functions in society where all things are preserved and uh, you know, like uh, you can, you can put anything in there. Like they just had a, like, I can't even, like if I had put the whole thing with like a banana duct tape to the wall or whatever, which literally just happened, like that yeah. would have fit in my book, like very easily. It would have only taken like a sentence and it wouldn't have, like, you know, and it wouldn't have really even shown like the depth of it when it actually happens in real life. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have been out of place in any way. It pretty, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, so like, did you just, uh, for like the audience, did you study, uh, were you like a philosophy student, English student, like what did you study or, or did you go the full neat route? Oh, I studied, I studied Russian. So my, really? I originally wanted to, yeah, um, I've, I've lost a lot of it because I don't really use it too frequently, but I'm pretty good at reading it still. Speaking it, I sound like a retard, but, <laughs> but that's just because I don't have a lot of people to talk to anymore. But I used to be pretty good at it. But that's what I studied in school. My goal was to like go into academia, specifically like the um, like Russian and American literature of like the 19th and 20th centuries. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I, you know, it's uh, academia is fucking a nightmare. It's a shit show, and uh, everyone told me to get out of it as soon as possible. So at least those parts of it are very much influenced by like my actual experiences there. I'm obviously not as much of a degenerate as my protagonist, but mm-hmm. I uh, was trying to like come up with like um, a kind of amalgam of kind of uh, what, like 4chan, R9K, Audist, Green Tech Story type people, along with like a couple of like shut, it, shut in, like neat um, deviant art type people that I grew up with yeah, who like are too. still, yeah. Like I, I think, you know, I don't know. I came from like a lower middle class area and I feel like, you know, that sort of like a Christian type figure is like more common there than in like the upper middle classes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Where like they kind of like you know get will will become like hyper obsessed with me like niche media or like anime specifically and it kind of like takes over their lives in a strange way and then like they're just like worthless. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I escaped that. That was very that could have very easily been my uh, my uh, trajectory, even though it still kind of is. But uh, I hope that I've brought a little bit more uh, style to it. Um, that's cool. So. Sorry, well, this morning thing is killing me. Uh, so the so the protagonist is like more of like a like kind of like a I guess I don't know your version of neat mixed with uh, the futility of academia. Um, I fortunately missed out on that because I studied math, so I, at least the academia in, in that sense felt a little more like there was some some sort of purpose. Um, yeah there's more of a like meritocracy or you could say that like you know you can't really flub or fake like knowing how to solve the equations you're given as homework mm -hmm. but when it comes to the humanities it's all about like different postures and it's all about like um like poses like a sterner a philosopher i really Mm -hmm. like he described uh, the liberal arts education as learning how to talk about things and that's really all that it is and so like you and these are not what is that but like learning how to seem like you know what you're talking about so all of these things like become like you you're it's really like an aesthetic sensibility that's being crafted when you're going into academia and like you're more trying to seem like an academic and write in an academic style and like hold yourself and have the sort of opinions that an academic would have and all of these things are just fashions yeah it's it's a it's like a secret handshake of like specific phrases you have to know and yeah and they become super insufferable they become super insufferable, like to the point where you know, like intersectionality of like the queering of binary, blah blah. Like you just all this nonsense. Uh, yeah, semiotics. Yeah, it's just it's just super insufferable. At a certain point, there's like that meme, right, where it's like, uh, put a, I put a gun to your head and like tell me what the lose meant. Like you know, what I mean? like don't break don't boil, don't break it down for me. Don't simplify it, or I will fucking yeah. <laughs> exactly. Did you? Um, that's kind of the idea, you know. Yeah, I get that. Did you, um, so did you pick up, like, just Deleuze on your own, or is that also part of, like, Russian? Do they also have you? Oh, uh, I have, like, a very strange, like, 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 set of influences, I guess. Like, a lot of, like, I was deeply embedded in, like, the Russian studies department at my school. I mean, I probably, like, dox myself to the point where everyone knows this, but I'm still not going to exactly give it away. That's fair. But, uh, it's one of the better ones, it was, like, one of the better departments in my school and one of the better, like, Russian studies departments, like, in America, um, so I had like really good education and I had a lot of access to like pretty rare texts that aren't that popular in America, uh, at least, or at least in American academics. So like, you know, like the philosophy of like Kazimir Malevich or like, um, 
I was just even reviewing a thread like earlier today because I constantly think about Alexander Kajev, but Kajev was huge for me when I was in college. Um, lots of lots of strange stuff that really came out of like Russian futurism or like Russian cosmism, and uh, yeah, a lot of like orthodox religious texts as well. So like I'm I, I try to like I have like a wider range of influences I think than the average like liberal arts student who like concentrates on continental Europe. Yeah. I actually picked up on a lot of the, or maybe it's all, it all kind of blends together between your Twitter and then the book as well, but uh, your, ortho, your Orthodox religious text influence as well. Um, so uh, there's some, I actually saved some tweet, tweet threads, but uh, what is your kind of view on uh, the way in which Christianity is kind of coming back online, like the, the uh, Tradcath and all that stuff? Well, I'll give you the cynical take because it's the one that I feel is more accurate than like the kind of optimistic take. I'm more of a pessimist, so I think it'd be more accurate for me to give my pessimistic take. But at this point, you know, it's another set of like poses. It's another set of like um, aesthetics that you can like dress yourself up, up in. And it's like, um, I don't know how much of it is like legitimate or not. I often think that like the most like legitimate Christians that I've ever like encountered in real life are often like, you know, like at the margins of society. Or like, you know, uh, I remember I have like very specific memories of like being on a subway at like 2 a.m. And uh, like, you know, people coming up to me and like talking about like the Gospels or whatever. Like for some reason, I just tend to attract these strange characters when I like go out into the city. And oftentimes I think of them as like messengers of God in a certain way, more so than like trad Catholic account number 59. That's like, you know, like sodomy bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it does definitely feel... I, I want to say that there's a level of people realizing that they that they read it atheists at like a decade was just bullshit and they were faking it to begin with and then they're kind of like keeping that nihilism up but just switching the uh, direction but uh, I do see it is also as posturing for the most part but I, I, there's a at least an attempt to come back to some level of sincerity I guess. Yeah, it's certainly more interesting, or at least uh, it's easier to nudge people who are trying these uh, poses on into more interesting paths than the people who are like dead set in, uh, I don't know, like Darwinian rationalism or whatever the hell the new atheists were standing for. I don't even quite know. Like, yeah. I don't really know what their positive content was. They were more just like fundamentalist Christianity bad. <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't know what they really brought brought to the conversation. Yeah. It was very cringe, and looking back, any and all time I spent during that era, I deeply regret. I mean, I sort of, I sort of understand it more since moving to the South. I guess. I mean, I grew up in the Northeast, so we're, it's like a thoroughly secular society. Like mm. churches and all this don't really have that much of a social power at all. Like at least where I grew up, and like there were very few like ardently religious kids there and if they were they were usually like the homeschool set and they kind of stayed amongst themselves because they didn't really know how to socialize amongst us like i don't know you could call us all degenerates i suppose <laughs> you know yeah, but but i can understand like you know like i now that i've been down here and i meet more people who grew up under like fundamentalist christian households or whatever like how kind of fucked that is like it a is lot of it is really consuming. really fucked and i can understand how like you know coming out of that would uh it would seem sort of liberating to be like just say no to it i suppose yeah uh i went to i finished high school in the south and the it's, it was weird coming from uh new york and them the cool kids were part of youth groups and stuff i was like wow this is wild uh yeah like that sort of shit is like totally unheard of like at least in the northeast like the idea that like people go go to like christian youth group like camp or whatever and it's not yeah. like this cringe like implicitly cringe thing that like the weird like fringe kids are doing but it's like the norm of the culture it's like something very different yeah it's definitely very strange to me uh uh cool so uh i'm gonna use this as the transition so the online r right i guess in do actually would you consider yourself kind of a right-wing artist or just like just i don't give a fuck I mean, you know, at a certain point, it's like, how much does it really matter what you consider yourself if everyone else is calling you something? So it's like, everyone else is calling me, like, for, I always say that, like, I ended up in the spheres that I ended up because it's the only place where anyone wants to talk about the things I wanted to talk about, you know, like, yeah. that you, you can't really have conversations about, like, Dante and, like, William Blake and, like, fucking Milton and Shakespeare and, like, any real interesting old stuff because the left is, like, very presentist in its orientation. And so, like, the, uh, I guess the traditionalists in a certain sense 
in like even the perennialist philosophy sense or whatever is like how I got into all of this. Like I ended up reading Spengler and Evola because I was doing a lot of research into Western esotericism and, Mm -hmm. you know, getting all all into this sort of stuff. And then like, you know, it turns out that sometimes the only people who want to talk about that sort of stuff are like basically (laughs) neo-Nazis. I mean, that's kind of how I found myself in the online right, supposedly. Uh, I just was bored of race conversation and the gender stuff. I was like this, and I was like, is there more out there? Because this is kind of a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I literally, I had a conversation when I was in college. So this is like 2014, like mm-hmm. before anything, before any of this, right? And I was talking to one of my TAs and I was telling him how, like I said, this is also stultifying for like the average like person. I was like, you're going to see like suburban white kids like doing Hail Hitlers like in very soon, like very soon because you've really given them no out. Like you've given this worldview where like they either have to accept like their total disenfranchisement as like second class citizens and like, you know, trying to like take away like any sort of left, like they don't even really have an identity, but you're making them want one. And it's like, that's the only one you've left them. And so they're going to take it. And I just see that, you know, and it's like, I'm not really like, supportive of that like i think that a lot of people are like ruining their lives trying to like be martyrs for this like very stupid cause at the end of the day because they're not going to do fucking anything with like you know having like putting up their little flyers or whatever like it's not really going to do anything Mm -hmm. except for destroy themselves but i think they want to destroy themselves because they like you know everyone's fucking miserable there's like death wishes everywhere it's definitely I kind of feel a little bit like a Holden Caulfield in that way where like, you know, I see a lot of people like on the verge of making some pretty shitty decisions in that sense. And I'm just like, you know, there's, a, there's other ways. Like you can, you can talk about these things and not destroy yourself. Yeah. It's definitely a cult of like, de- it's a death worship and as well as like a victimhood cult. It's like the, for those who are find themselves on like the correct side of the oppression and hierarchy, they are really just trying to like profit from victimhood and then everyone else is like, I guess I'm going to be the villain here. It's, it's kind of silly. Yeah. You know, if you've really given them no way to choose anything else, you know, at a certain, like, this is like the, this is like a constant talking point and like, it just shows how deep it actually goes that like, you no know, people are like, they're going to call you a Nazi anyway. So just be a Nazi, like, <laughs> like come out and like, you know, say 1488, and, like do the fucking salutes. This is like, you know, I would say like right after the Trump election with like Hailgate and whatnot. This yeah. is a big conversation of like, like, even if you don't actually believe that, like you should just do it anyway, because they're going to call you that anyway. And it's like a good troll, <laughs> basically. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, now you are just fucked. Like now you've just fucked, like, you know that you're going to be fucked doing this. Like, I don't know. People thought there's going to be a real like tide change that like everything was going to open up and change like it really kind of felt that way in a sense but it's it's everything's kind of retrenched into the the same uh the same two sides i suppose yeah there's uh, you can't really escape the the cultural tie here yeah Um, we just keep going through the same cycles like it kills me like i'm seeing everyone do this all over again and i'm just like do you guys remember like last time like do you think things are gonna like every time it's like this time it's different this time we're gonna have we're gonna have campus groups and like we're gonna be allowed to set up institutions and we're gonna do a march to the institutions and change it's like no 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 like you're not gonna get anything done yeah the cathedral is uh is absolute uh so then I don't know, so, like, but I do see, I don't know if it's, like, right-wing stuff, per se, but, like, given that it's kind of, like, an, like a very amorphous group, but uh, there's a lot of, a lot of the right right now is big on, like, uh, anti-FAP and, like, a lot of, like, more traditional uh, values, I suppose. Uh, I, I, and I find myself, like, as someone who also grew up in the Northeast where it's very, it's hard to not be, cosmopolitan by like like my tradition would be cosmopolitanism so yeah yeah so it's just, i get you yeah it's hard for me to just like revert like i don't feel like a reversion because like sunday morning is going sunday every sunday we went to museums and shit so it's like uh but even still i find myself see like, this is what i'm saying you see this is the church of the secular world right you go to museums you know i exactly. i see i yeah you get it but um 
Yeah, I under like I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that people get a little uh, uh, like it becomes like we talk about virtue signaling, but there's just as much virtue signaling here where it's like, okay, yeah, like we agree, like you know, you shouldn't like jerk off all the time, and like pornography is like probably bad for you. And like as an institution, it's definitely shady as hell and definitely exploitative. You know, there's a lot of different angles at which these things are bad. Same thing with like drug use, where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you know, obviously like doing drugs all the time is bad for you, like not only in your health, but like but like spiritually the markets for these things are ultimately run on like fucking cartels and bloodshed and like the CIA, like running fucking you, like all of this is like, you can have conversations about this, but people are more interested in like virtue signaling about like having the right opinion. It's like really, you know, how much of this uh, academic jargon recreates itself in a, any milieu is a, uh, all these poses and like the, uh, the just like trading poses across the, this gap of the internet. Where uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. That's that's how I see it. A lot, like, what, like imagine, imagine making your brand in life the anti-fap guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, what the fuck is you? That's fucking almost more perverted in a certain <laughs> sense. I mean, there's a market for it, I'm sure. I mean, sure, you, but like, you know, why? Yeah, there's also a market for pornography. I feel like you know, in some ways, like. What 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 I would define pornography as is a uh, how Nabokov would, which is the copulation of cliche. So like pornographies are all like hyper banal cliche sorts of media where you know everything like it's just about more and more and more and more you know more tits more dicks more ejaculations more 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 and it's just like an unsatisfiable like a libidinal mess mm -hmm. and at the same time like this sort of discourse is the same where it's just like the recreations of these cliches like anti-fap 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 or whatever it goes like this for like all sides of these things where people are almost pornographically indulging in their own discourse yeah that's fair uh but is there really any choice though like what else is there in this current age other than to be self-indulgent and like just increase the rhetoric yeah it's a good question man it's a good question i don't know if it hasn't if it if it's really been any different in any other time though um it's just more uh, obvious or it's like we've reached a point of like hyper reality where you don't have to look abstract out from the conditions to be like well look at it this way like you could look at it like it's like no it's like on the face fucked up and like yeah. uh, because because everything that was like subconscious is now just like the surface in some ways like everything's just been released like people are now like you know you, you walk by a furry convention or something and it's like Jesus fucking Christ, like, uh, how can, like, yeah, whatever, maybe you're into that shit or whatever and, like, some part of your mind, but, like, the fact that it's, like, been able to, just, like, this specific instance has blossomed into a whole fucking, like, culture and there's, like, communities for it and stuff is, like, so, so historically fucking strange. And they're, like, multiple thousands of dollar suits, by the way. Those are... <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's, like, the same thing with, like, I, like, I was thinking a lot about stuff like that and, like, Comic-Con and, like, just the kind of costumery and, like, the, of a, uh, that's why, you know, the term clown world was uh, something we used a lot earlier than when it blew up and then, you know, the Joker movie comes out. So it's, like, it, it feels strange to, like, to come up with these terms and then to see them really, like, flirt, like, mm -hmm. it, the same shit happens to them. Like, I don't know if there's any escape because I feel like anything I do ultimately <laughs> ends up feeding into this, this shit in itself. Yeah, it is. It's it's kind of wild. Uh, it's very Baudrillard. I mean, like you used to term hyper reality, but like for the, those who don't know, it, like everything's kind of just become second, third order imitations of I don't know, of fiction or like of itself. Um, yeah, like uh, yeah, Baudrillard's in, like Baudrillard definitely like in the vein of the stuff that I'm interested in. Like Baudrillard also is like you know reading the sorts of people that I I was like you know he has like a similar set of influences myself. Like um, when it came to what he was reading, like he was reading Kajev and like Marshall McLuhan and all these other people. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. Um, so where do you think that like writing comes in? Because I, I I'm torn between this being like a great time to be a writer and a horrible time to be a writer in that there's so much distraction and so many things that are out there that are far more uh, attention getting than it's like then to write another ebook, or, you know, and know that like maybe four people read it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if I had like a, there's no rational thing here. Like this is a purely irrational like thing that I felt like I've been born to do. 
if that mm. makes any sense. And I do believe in a kind of like fate or like, I do believe in God and I do believe in like these sorts of like higher um, callings. And like, if you think about it from a purely utilitarian perspective, obviously it makes no fucking sense. Like it makes no fucking sense at all to like put so much effort into like an ebook that sells to like, you know, a thousand people in this niche corner of the internet. Like, obviously this isn't like how you go about it. Like I knew kids who got like book deals and whatnot and they like, and it's mostly for like writing auto ethnographic fiction. So it's not something anyone would be interested in mine because I'm, I'm a straight white male from like lower middle class America. Like, haven't we heard enough from me again, <laughs> you know, because all, obviously we're all the same, just like everyone else is the same, which is why we need all of the, the books from super unique perspectives, meaning like unique ethnographies or whatever. Like that's the real market right now is selling your uh, like identity or like, you know, you're being like, I'm a, I'm like half Vietnamese and half black from the Mississippi Delta. Like my book is going to be way more interesting just because of that. Yeah. Like that's really how you sell things. It's really how you sell things these days. So, I mean, like literally I know this girl who got her diary published like in a niche press and I was just like, why, why? Like you're not a, like you're not fucking interesting. Like you're like 22, you know, crazy shit. And like, that's what, that's what people are really looking for. So I don't know. Why do I write? I don't know. I just always have, I just love literature. I'm not really writing for like, I'm writing uh, as Pushkin said, you know, you write for yourself and you publish for money. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I, I write weird fucking technology blogs and books. So I, I don't, and I know for a fact, no one's reading it. So I don't know. I feel you on that. Yeah. I mean, like, who's going to listen to this? I don't know, but it's more interesting than what I was doing earlier today. You know, I like just like the kind of people I've been thrown into contact with from this whole sphere. It's made my life more interesting in some way. So I don't really regret it. Like, I don't know, I could, uh, maybe I should have gone to business school and I could have been a consultant or something, but I think I would have been miserable. Yeah, I feel that. I'm with you on that. Um, So also, uh, back to the, uh, so obviously the beginning of your book starts off with a lot, like a whole dating app scene, uh, like a, like a algorithmically generated date. Uh, And I find dating apps to be like incredibly interesting and I can't get enough of them. Uh, what is your take on like dating apps and how it's affecting, I mean, obviously the book tells you on some sense, but what is your take on like dating apps and how it's affecting like relationships and that whole scene? I mean, I, I honestly, I kind of use it as a red herring because I don't know how dating apps work from firsthand. I've never used one in my life. I only know like other people talking about them or I know about them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that was more just like a way of like setting up the scene, like in a way where like, how would these people like be matched together in any way? And the whole question really is it so like it's yeah i i have no idea how the fuck it works this is all like from me like looking at what other people have said about them or like you know people telling me stories about going on dating app dates and whatnot but i i i don't know i think they're clearly kind of fucked obviously like they're like utilitarian as hell like everyone becomes a sort of resource value it's like the same way with any kind of social media though um so i don't know I don't know, man. It's fucked. I see people like getting together on those and they seem happy, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know if that's really the point of them. Like, that's what the ostensible point is, is to like bring people together and like, you know, have like, you know, people getting married or something, but I don't really know if that's like actually the point. Like, because I don't know if that's, that's a great commodity as much as it is like, you know, turning like it into the hookup app, right? Yeah. Like what, what, if you're hooking up all the time, then you're a hooker. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, at what point is this just like a sexual mark? Like, is this just like, you know, prostitution? I I I always view it as that scene in uh, what is that? Logan's Run, where he like comes home and like puts on his like virtual reality dating app and just like picks up a hooker and she just comes over, like instant. And that's why I feel like all these apps are. Yeah, I feel like that's like the more accurate way of looking at them is that they're more like they're more like volunteer ho- like prostitution apps. Like people are prostituting themselves out to each other but i think that people might be more naive than that and i think a lot of people use them not thinking of them in that way and i think you know there can be like real relationships that spawn from stuff like that but i don't know yeah i haven't really seen too many uh i'd say there i'd say that as the dating app world has progressed it has become rare and rare it used to be a lot more viable but now that we people realize that the long form dating apps aren't really working for most people. It, it has basically just become prostitution in my opinion. 
Yeah, I mean, also, it's like, you know, that, that, like, you can go back to any, like, Victorian fucking novels about marriage plots, right, where it's, like, the guy who's, like, oh, yes, I'm totally gonna marry you, and then he, like, fucks the girl and leaves or whatever. Like, this is, sort of, can also be the case with a dating app. You know, you go on these, like, the ones that are, like, this is unlike all the other dating apps because it's about serious relationships or whatever. But that's just another pose you can play in order to get more pussy. It is. That is very true. It is definitely a pose you can play. That's a market, you know. You could just be getting all the thirty-five-year-old women or whatever. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's an out. That's a way. Uh, so, what's your um? So wait, so are you just like a traditionalist? You just do the good old-fashioned. I walk up and say hi. I mean, I'm like married, man. I'm like oh, married. I'm a married, married man, and I met my wife when I was like very young. So I'm like not. Hey, I'm not like I'm like yeah there but for the grace of god go i you know like i i don't really i'm thankful for what i have but i don't really know how the fuck it works for everyone else you missed like they, everyone's oh, seen, hell. so that's good everyone seems miserable so <laughs> i don't know i'm not i'm not really uh, I'm not, I'm just counting my lucky stars man no you definitely got the better uh the better deal here uh so you have a few threads on like uh on like uh the i don't know how to Try to not using like terminology well, on like the like the black hole that is like video games or like the black hole that is like distraction of these sorts. Like, what is like, um, I, I read it recently. What is your like view on like video games and has it relates to like, um, pornography or like just like the passive media consumption there? Um, I do think I think that at a certain point they become like. So what's really popular, right, in like cutting edge economics right now, or like a neoliberal management of society is what they call behavioral economics and nudging. So it's like you, you it's about like gamifying uh, your life and putting a lot of uh, like metrics on it for like your consumer behavior, credit scores, all of these sorts of things are all tied together in how you create like gaming marketplaces or how do you make a game as addictive as possible. I often compare our society right now to like a free to play mobile game or something. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, you know, if you if you showed up every day and you did your little daily quests and you and you know, you could work your way up to buying that epic mount or whatever. But if you already have like inherited money, you can just buy that fucking thing. So that's really how like the the, the it's sort of I don't know which came first. This is like a chicken egg problem. Like, are we learning how to make this fucking managerial hell worse because of video games? Like they're giving us a lot of test markets to learn how to do this. Or did we create these because they're like the natural product of a society that was already going in that direction? Yeah, I get that. It's really funny. Um, I feel like Japanese, I feel like anime, the part that what makes it so relatable to Westerners is that it reflects kind of like the, uh, the drudgery of modern life. And like the most popular genre of, of anime is what's called isekai, which is basically making real life a video game. Uh, yeah, I think that it's like, uh, so this is where I get to Kajev, right? And where I think that he, in, a, in his book, um, the, in, in Introduction to the Reading of Hegel, which is like a really funny title because it's really like not really about Hegel at all. Um, it's just his own philosophy and he was pretending he was teaching Hegel. <laughs> funny guy. It's a synthesis. Funny guy. Good move. Good move. He showed, up in France. he showed up in France like pretending to be like the German philosopher, but he was really the Russian philosopher. You know, very interesting guy. Um, and uh, what he said was that Japan was the first society to create what we now what he called post historical conditions. So it's like like in the Edo period when they closed off, and like you you have the replication of like basically Western standards of living and like you know this sort of managerial society. And, but what the the functional myth- mythography that is like the whole society is built on is just form alone. So it's like you know you 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 just show up and you like do your duty. It's like the tea ceremony. Where like you do things, it's like the the it's like poses again, like mm-hmm. all these. It's like the outward, um, the outward reflection as opposed to uh, it being really meaningful and a kind of connected to the rest of your life. Way it's like the way that like neo pagans exist now, or like you mm-hmm. know you could even say if you're cynical, like the trad the trad Christian type people, where it's like form alone, like they're not really connected to the form of life that spawned this religion in the mm-hmm. first place. Like they're not they're not like shepherds or they're not like medieval farmers or they're not like, you know, they're not any of these sorts of groups that really use this as a, as a, as a resource in their lives there, but they can, they can pretend to be. And that's sort of what the post historical condition anyway, like in um, Japan has come out to be that you have people who, um, 
they just do things for that form alone for like social conventions alone and it's kind of divorced of any like real connection to how things used to be it's like they still sort of have like a near like bushido code type deal when it comes to like japanese business practices especially mm -hmm. they're all very formalistic but they're 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 now like inside of corporations so it's like you're like at like coca-cola japan and you're like treating you're like higher ups as if they're like, I don't know, like fucking senpai. Yeah. yeah like it. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. No, I get that. And it's, it's a, it is really strange. It, it's a fun. And I find that like anime makes, especially and like the Japanese culture just adds enough, like a, a good insight to American culture because of that form alone. Uh, and it's why I probably still watch it. I don't know. Uh, but it, no, this it, is like this is what because Jeff said that this was the better alternative to like what you could he really put, portrayed America as being another sort of post historical condition, but as opposed to being snobs like the Japanese. Because what's a snob but someone who's doing something for form alone, mm -hmm. right? Like, but an animal can't be a snob. He considered Americans to just be animals. We're like, we've like totally lost our sense of like humanity and what we can we just do whatever. Like, you know, the the, the real philosophy in America is like the pursuit of happiness part of uh, the constitution is what or the declaration whatever the fuck jefferson yeah. put that little fucker in i hate that it's like a horrible little like little joke in a history that the pursuit of happiness bit there as opposed to property which is what it was initially yeah. um because the pursuit of happiness just means like what does that mean that's like if you brought that to dante he'd be like sin <laughs> like he'd, like what is that what is the pursuit of happiness but like but like this like horrible tempestuous whirlwind where you're chasing after like just like the next fix because like you can't pursue happiness yeah. is just a thing is like a momentary feeling mm -hmm. you can't really pursue it you can't really expect when it's going to happen either like you're happy sometimes for no fucking reason and you don't even know why so like how could you just like live your life based off of like pursuing happiness it's much closer to like an animal feeling right where it's like you know they're pursuing the next thing they're not really they don't they've like don't have any higher faculties it's a perfect so, motor for uh the capitalist drive i suppose yeah, it's like really locked in at the same time like we've used it. So like, you know, that's why it's like uh it's like who who are you to say like if I enjoy it and I think it's fun that it's bad. And it's like, well, I'm a snob. So, and and being a snob is bad in America. Whereas in Japan, being a snob is like the respected form of like you're supposed to be a snob. You're not supposed to just like, you know, be a fucking brazen like mater hedonist. Like that would be frowned upon. It's very difficult to get drugs in Japan. They have a very different relation to all of these sorts of things than we do in America, because in America, we're all like human livestock. We're all like lab rats, really. And uh, the, the worst thing you can do in America is to say, like, like, maybe you shouldn't do that. Like, maybe you shouldn't just indulge in all of your fucking whims. Maybe that's yeah. bad. Because honestly, it's really difficult to, just, to tell them why not, aside from just like creating, you're saying like, well, aesthetically, like you look gross doing this, like uh, number one. Like, let's not even talk about morality or whatever, because morality is, comes downstream from, like, what is beautiful or not. Like, is yeah, this beautiful it's behavior? Disgust. It's all disgust sensitivity. It's basically aesthetics. Y yeah, to, to a degree, because at this point, you know, it's like, it's like you don't think that the drag queen, like, reading, like, put it, like, reading stories at the local thing is beautiful. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, that's, you're, like, you're supposed to just accept everyone's, cons like, there's no standards because what, what, like, does a pig tell another pig not to eat out of that slot bowl? Like, no, you can eat anything. If it's edible, if you can eat it, like, who am I to tell you not to consume that? Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, and if you ever try to take some kind of, like, quote unquote moral position, like, oh, I don't want to, let's say, like, I don't know, if I don't want to eat meat or I don't want to drink alcohol or whatever, you're immediately, like, socially outcast. Yeah, like, first yeah, that's being like, an asshole, but like, even still, like, yeah, okay. like, that's why I sort of feel bad for vegans. I'm not really a vegan, and I think the whole thing's kind of misguided, but I feel like the people who are like anti vegan are like, or like, extremely so, are much more annoying to be around. Where they're like, you know, they like often have to constantly talk about how they would like never restrain their own appetites, like, like, and how like it's like weakness or like some sort of straight, like, you know. It's like even the soy thing, I think, is kind of overplayed at this point. It, like, had a purpose, but every – I'm telling you, man, it's like we make these memes and, like, the context and what we we're actually going for and, like, what they end up being, like, as soon as, like, basically the fucking baby boomers and, like, the, the Facebook people and whatnot get a hold of them, it just makes me, like, grow sick. Like, I don't want to, like, be associated with a lot of the stuff – 
we've created, even though I think it's, it's like been done good, some good for some people. I don't really know. They kind of get adapted into this garbage where it's like, like, I don't, I really don't want, want to like make more firepower for these annoying fuckers who are like, whose whole whose whole purpose is like like that everything should just be unbridled consumption of whatever you want like that's real freedom like these real freedom american retards who are like real freedom is like i can eat whatever the fuck i want and i can buy whatever the fuck i want and you can't tell me nothing about that or whatever mm-hmm. it's it, it's a uh, depressing in a lot of ways uh, the, uh and you're being kind of like steered by your uh base instincts which i which i do not like that's literally, it's literally what Dante conceives of hell as, is people who are dumb, or at least the, 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 uh, the, like, the not as bad circles of hell, I guess, like the venial sins, as opposed to like the real horrible sins, are people who are just totally dominated by like lust, gluttony, et cetera, these sorts of things. And I just see that everywhere. Like, I, I feel like we've like created like a hell world, <laughs> like, like people are living in hell, mm-hmm. the hell that they create for themselves, really. Yeah, that's kind of the. It's funny because I like I grew up religious in a lot of ways, and the, and you know now that we live in a predominantly, I mean, entirely secular society. So the like the heaven hell like storylines were always presented in a spiritual manner, but like the modernity is very much a heaven hell order chaos like like situation, and living by your base instincts will bring you to hell ultimately. It, yeah. I mean, that was, I think one of the best reviews of my book was, uh, I use it as like one of the blurbs on my pin tweet was, uh, isn't this a picture of hell? And it's like, it is like the whole thing is, is like, I'm trying to, it's like a depiction of hell. And like, you know, there, it has like, the, I tried to structure it in some ways on like the inferno on my next book. I'm trying to write more of like a purgatory book, like someone, you know, try like not really in hell at the, you know, like yeah. it's a lot harder to write. It's a lot easier to get inspiration to write about hell because we're surrounded by it but maybe we don't need more hell books. I don't know. I'm going to try to write a purgatory book. Hmm. That's cool. Uh, do you have any, uh, have you already started writing it or just kind of? Yeah. I, yeah. I, bet, I mean, I'm always writing like a couple things at a time. This is going to be the one that I'll probably finish first. Um, but right. I don't know. I have like, I have like a bunch of different projects in various states of completion. Like, I don't know when I'll be able to finish all of them, but you know, it's what I do. I, I, I can't help it. Like, I really can't stop. If I, even if I wanted to, I'd be thinking about, like, plots or, like, the, the architecture of, like, how a certain story could work and stuff. Like, it's just, I'm, like, cursed with it, I guess. Or, you know, I, gifted. I, get <laughs> I, I wish I had more of the fiction. I, I, it's, a, it's a slightly different mind, I find, for the writer who can write fiction. I, I have, like, plots that I, but I can't, like, uh, develop on them well enough, I guess. Maybe it's a lack of empathy. I don't know what it is. I, I feel like it's a lot, it's like a, it's a combination of, of like, kind of like logic puzzles to a certain degree. Like, just like the, the, like, that's like how you make like a plot work together. Like, how do you get from this scene to that scene sort of stuff? It's kind of more like building a proof in math or like, you know, um, like Dante always compared uh, writing sonnets to like geometric proofs. And I think that's like a really good way to look at it because you have to have like a very, uh, very good like i'm a very big structuralist when it comes to literature i very much hate the sense that literature is just like an outpouring of your feelings that's yeah, like you know like on unmo- like you know like slam poetry where it's just like people just as i've called it they're just being gay out loud you know <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on poetry i fucking hate poetry at least modern- see i love poetry but that's not really poetry like that's that's re- it's like a, a weird fucked up form of rhetoric like there's no structure they're not really like building structures. There's no like, they don't know anything about meter or like, you know, the different forms or genres of poetry. They're not using like any sort of imagery from like traditional sources, you know, like, you know, like writing a fucking ode to Jupiter or something like, yeah. you know, like these sorts of, there's like long tradition. This is why I'm a traditionalist, I guess, because I don't think you can write literature just unmoored from the, tr- like the tradition of literature. Like it's a collective project, not, um, not like your personal feelings about things. Yeah, that's the, the uh, one, I guess, while I find like postmodernism very interesting, the downside is the rejection of like quality or like tr- or tradition or like structure. So, so hot take here. I don't believe that postmodernism is like a real term. Like, I don't know oh, what really? the fuck people mean by this. No, I really don't. 
because like most of like I really don't um like what what would you say is like the arc postmodernist sort of book like let's say like we, someone would say infinite jest right but like infinite jest is really based off of like Thomas Pynchon William Gaddis mm -hmm. and those were based off of like their structures are very much based off of the modernist infinite jest and postmodern I think that's like the first like what they what someone would say like meta modern like the like the contemporary. see this is even this is <laughs> I hate meta modern even even more it's like compounded idiocy like it's like we're not put let's like oh, stop coming up with fucking shit we're all modern it's like you have no choice but to be a modernist like That's we've fair. been modernists for like a hundred years like after the that, industrial I'd say after you have electricity you're a modernist that's fair i'd say that the if i was to like pick a book that's postmodern, i'd say like naked lunch or whatever that what's that book that's like uh like william burroughs like cut ups techniques yeah. and stuff yeah i don't even think that's a fucking good book william burroughs like it's a shitty it's book. like that's the whole reason why i think it's postmodern. I, yeah, so postmodern just means it's trash, I guess. I don't, like that's that's how that's how like a, a Jordan Peterson type person we use the term, but then other people use it as if it's like, well, you know, it's like questioning the value of meta narratives. It's like, oh, is that your the meta narrative of postmodernism? It's mm -hmm. like fucking so self defeating and retarded. Like I don't get what anyone means. It's, this is what I, I think it's all poses. I don't think it's like I'll put a gun to your head, and be like tell me what postmodernism is, <laughs> and it's like I don't think anyone could do it. That's very fair. That's all right. That's fair. I mean, you are ultimately stuck in modernism, regardless of what you want to do. Uh, it's it yeah. Is, it's really like it's it's people. I think trying to like you know they're pretending like oh yeah we're, we're we don't need any of these like traditional forms or whatever. It's like well you don't have a choice. Like your whole brain is molded by people who are molded by people who are molded by people in this unending chain of influence. Like you're not just like getting influence from nowhere. It's like, I don't know, do you ever, I used to meet like writer kids who are like, yeah, I don't really read that many books. I don't want them to like influence me. It's like, the fuck are you talking? Like you, you're like, you want to be as, as influenced as possible by like everything so that you can like, could, like collate it and like put it together and just maybe if you're fucking lucky and you have a lot of talent, you could like build on that. That's the best you could do. But people are more interested in like, you know, I want to just like, what if it was Star Wars, but underground? <laughs> and it's all mole people or some shit. Like this is the sort of ideas they come up with. I, I that is definitely a very fair take. I find that uh, the whole like everyone wants to like do something new, but it ultimately ends up just being just the same shit, just regurgitated with different identity politics and different uh, settings. It's it's stupid. It, well, it's like even like you know, you take sci-fi as a genre, which is another thing where it's like I don't think sci-fi exists. I, I just get into arguments all the time with people like this because it's like science fiction is like okay, it's all based off of like sea metaphors. Like you're on a spaceship, and the, mm -hmm. the you know you've all of the planets are just islands. You know, they're these like like you if you read like 18th century travel literature, 19th and like all these sorts of things, it's no fucking different than sci-fi. Like all or like you could you could set Moby Dick in space, it would be easy because it's all the same metaphors. You could set mm -hmm. you like you could set any of the things that are about going out to sea in space because it's the same idea. I'd say that if you're doing the time travel narratives are probably the only modern sci-fi or like a well, that was, I mean, people don't really do time travel as much anymore, but time travel was like the, I feel like the 21st or the 20th, whatever, 20th century. Like, yeah. Yeah. Time, time travel, time. definitely. But even that, I would think it's more based off of like uh, it changes in like literary structures, right? So it's like you couldn't like, um, you couldn't write time travel stories without the detective book existing yeah. first, because the way that you plot a detective book is the same way that you would plot a time travel book. Yeah, that like the, the kind of process that you'd have to go through in order to because you're like bringing it you're like you have like a single timeline but you're cutting up the timeline into into like a separate timeline of events where that doesn't follow chronologically if that makes sense where it's like the beginning isn't the beginning the end isn't the end but if you took that you abstract it away from it you could find the quote-unquote like real timeline so it's like just one layer of abstraction away same thing with detective story because you have the story of figuring out the, the case that story is already enmeshed in like the story of the murder that happened before that your reading of it began. And all of these have to, these two timelines have to be contiguous and they have to like connect in a perfect stream. So that's the satisfaction when you, you get, when you read them is that you can like see the whole timeline. Yeah. I will not to meme, but I, I've now that we're on this conversation, I think that Rick and Morty might be the only sci-fi out right now. Uh, and it's in that it's interdimensional. Uh, not really like interdimensionally woven plot lines that aren't time travel based, but they're kind of, I don't 
don't know, multiverse, even though it is definitely a meme, and I hate that I just one sixty. I mean, it. so I have like a really horrible relationship with Rick and Morty because I, I it all comes down to Dan Harmon, who is Rick. Like the yeah. whole show is like Rick is Dan Harmon, Morty is Justin Roiland. They have the same opinions, right? They're reflected, and at this point, honestly, like after maybe the first season, it's not about like what can we do with these characters. It's how the fuck do we write another fucking episode of Rick and Morty? Like oh, yeah. every episode is about the writing process itself. Like they had that most recent one about the heist plot and that whole <laughs> thing. I can, I can, the real timeline there that you can abstract out of it is what like them doing a, in the writing room and Justin Roiland said, let's do a heist thing. And Dan Harmon's like, I fucking hate heist shit. And it's all about like Dan Harmon trying to tell Justin Roiland what a stupid fucking idea heist, heist plots are. That's Factual. the whole plot of the, that's literally the plot of the episode. The, like, uh, it's the following it's episode. So up its own ass. The following episode is basically the same thing, but it's uh, it's a time travel Terminator plot about how, basically how- How much time travel plots are stupid? Yeah, basically. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, he can't, Dan Harmon has nothing to say, except for, like, how he doesn't like, like, really basic Hollywood formulas. But all he can do is, ta- is like, show how those don't work. Like, that's all he's ever done. Like, he takes, like, he does a pastiche- of, I guess if this is what postmodernism is, where the meta narrative is just about how like these structures are structures, and like yeah. that means they have rules, and then you, and that no rules. matter what you end up, and that no matter what you end up replicating these structures, and like you're mad about it, that's that's what. Then I can understand Rick and Morty is postmodernism. Dan Harmon is the ultimate postmodern philosopher. Who just <laughs> like, and it's all just rooted in self-loathing. Like yeah. that's all that it is. You have to, to be fair, you have to have 160 IQ. Yeah, you so. have to have a 160 IQ to hate yourself this much. <laughs> and like, be a fucking alcoholic. And, oh, my God, have you seen a, the Harmontown documentary? I have not, but I'm sure it's, like... It's fucking brutal, dude. Like, he, he's such a bad person. Like, Dan Harmon is such an icon for so much of what is wrong with the arts, like, today. Because, like, he, he has talent, but he has nothing to say. Like, he has, like, formalist, like, structure, like, he really does, like, he understands how stories work. Story structure. He understands the structures, but, uh, like, he hates that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he hates that he can see it. Like, it's kind of this weird self-loathing autism. Whereas, like, I revel in these things. I love structures. I love story structures. I love that things are comprehensible and that we can make stories that make sense, you know? But I I guess, uh, I don't know. His wheel, his story structure wheel is actually the most, like, clear, uh, how to write a story I've ever seen and I use it all the time. Uh, It's funny because like, it's based off of, um, it's based off of a lot of like the same sort of things that I read. Of of course, he's like very much down the chain of influence. Like he's just on like Joseph Campbell hero mono myth type thing, which he's carved up into another level of abstraction where it gets rid of some of the figures and he just replaces it with like want thing, Mm but get that, you know, it's literally just about the act of consumption and the end is about how like you hate yourself for it. Like his his story structure is like the the story of um, like hyper compulsive consumption and self-loathing afterwards. It's literally every episode of Rick and Morty is like jerking off and then post not remorse. Like that's what it is. That is, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty accurate actually. That's That's his life, dude. That's his (laughs) life. He's the bigot. He's a wanker, as they say. He's a coomer. Yeah, he's a big coomer. It's like the coomer show. The <laughs> Anthony Coomier show. The Anthony Coomier. That's, I think that's a good place to, uh, to, to end it. That's very accurate. I don't think I can... Yeah, you're coomier. welcome, man. That's like, that's the best brick and Morty take anyone has ever had. And it's right here. And who knows? Who's IQ. It, but yeah, you need 300 IQ to understand that take. Factual. Uh, well, thank you, Logo. Um, do you have anything you want to promote at the moment? Any... Uh, uh, buy my fucking book, assholes. But if you're listening to this, you probably already have, and I love you, my devoted fans and followers. I love everyone. Love you all. <laughs> awesome. Appreciate you coming on. Peace, man. Peace.